Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Yan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome back to Football Therapy. I've had a day off because I've been pretty ill. I'm still pretty ill, but I want to make a video for you guys. So here I am, and welcome to the video, which is a Chelsea news video where I will be talking about three subjects. I want to quote and comment Frank Lampard when he spoke about Hakim Ziyech recently, what he said about him, and that what that implies, basically, like positionally and stuff. Brighton over Albion want Jeremy Bogart, the player that Chelsea have a buyback clause on for a very reasonable price and might go in for him, might not go in for him. Barcelona want him. There's some stuff to talk about there. And I'm sure you've all heard the news about Manchester City being banned from the Champions League, well, from all UEFA competitions for two years by UEFA, which they're going to fight. It's pretty complicated and epic. It's an incredible story, actually. But what that means, spoiler, it means really, in a way, there's an extra Champions League spot for Chelsea to go for this season. Oh yeah, also, I've gone full Jose Mourinho again. Right then, before we do get into the content, I want to remind you guys to please subscribe if you've not yet done so. Hit the bell notifications icon because that really is important. Why not like the video? Come follow me on Instagram as well to hang out on my Instagram lives where we just chat about football and stuff. All right. Let's get into it. Let's start off with Jeremy Bogart, the 23-year-old Frenchman playing out in Syria for Sassuolo, having an excellent season, scored a bunch of goals, well, not a bunch, some goals, good goals, world-class goals, long-range goals, last-minute winner goals, generally playing very well for that Sassuolo team, being the difference maker slash star man. Chelsea, of course, have a buyback clause on the winger for 15 million euros, which is under 13 million pounds, an incredibly enticing proposition to bring him back to the club. Obviously, Chelsea have just made the agreement to sign Hakim Ziyech in the summer. He's an attacking midfielder slash winger, kind of like Jeremy Boga. What does it mean if you bring Boga? Does that kill the Sancho deal? Is the Sancho deal off the table anyway because of the money that needed to be spent or will be spent? So many questions. Okay, so here's the deal. Boga is a great player and the value of 50 million euros for a buyback clause, considering how well he's playing at what level, is incredible value. Barcelona are apparently interested and Brian Hove Albion, which granted are at the bottom of the Premier League, but it's still that Premier League money. So really, what's Chelsea going to do? Well, if they were really smart and kind of heartless, <laughs> They'd buy him back and sell him on for a profit for like a good 10 mil on top, maybe. I'm one of these people that have been saying on Twitter and on, indeed on this channel as well that buying back Jeremy Boga is an absolute no-brainer. But I was kind of thinking to also supplement with Sancho. Obviously, I really didn't see Hakim Ziyech coming, but Chelsea have signed an amazing player there at an amazing price. Go watch my previous videos on Ziyech if you haven't. So... It kind of leaves us in a predicament. It's still amazing value to bring back Boga, but it's like, right, is that going to kill any chances of another elite winger? Because say both Pedro and Willian are on their way out, then of course Ziyech and one more has to come in. And again, Boga would seem the perfect profile because you, you'd imagine he'd be happy to be a rotational player but someone like the likes of Jadon Sanjo would be want to absolutely start, as would Ziyech. So, it's a difficult one. I want to get your thoughts on it down below. Do you think it's a no-brainer buying back Boga? Buying back Boga, Jesus, the alliteration. I thought it was, but now I'm kind of feeling differently. So give me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. It actually leads me on nicely to the next subject. Frank Lampard's comments on Hakim Ziyech. I just want to let you know what he said and also the implications moving forwards. When interviewed by Sky Sports, Lampard said, Well, I think he's a fantastic player. And first came into my eye line during their run in the Champions League last season. Obviously, when they got to the semi-finals. He was one of their standout players against Tottenham, of course. And then we've come up against them twice this season, so I know a lot about him. I know his qualities. He has a great left foot. Generally plays off the right, but he can play behind the front man. Mm. And when you look at us this season, there are many games where we've struggled to unlock the door. He is a player we hope can bring that bit of creativity that brings something different. He scores goals and gets assists. Now, that's what he said to Sky Sports, but in his press conference as well, Frank Lampard also mentioned that Hakim Ziyech can play behind the front man. I have a sneaking suspicion that Frank Lampard will look to play Ziyech as a number 10 when he can. Now, I think because of his sweet left foot, he'll want to play him on the right so he can cut in on his left foot. If Lampard has the idea of benching Mount, sort of rotating Mount, playing Ziyech in the number 10, Pulisic on the left wing, and then someone like Sancho on the right wing, then suddenly you're looking at Hudson-Odoi and maybe Boga as rotational wingers. So your starting wingers could be 
Pulisic or Hudson Adoy, depending on who's in form. Sancho on the right, and then Ziyech just plays in the number 10, and you can accommodate a lot of people there. Still, this is kind of me playing virtual FIFA in my mind, trying to squeeze all the decent players into a formation, and that obviously is in a 4 2 3 1. So it's still going to be really, really difficult to keep four top tier winger attacking midfielders happy but still even though i find it difficult in my head to fit them all in and keep everyone happy if chelsea do end up signing Jaden sancho in the summer it would just be mind-blowing i'd just be like well we've got them all and we've broken football again saying that if chelsea don't and they do bring in someone like boga they've got ziesh they bring in a left back they bring in another striker that would still be considered a very very successful transfer window indeed it would just kind of hurt to see sancho go somewhere else after we know all these things about him, him being a Chelsea fan, idolising Lampard, being mates with the Chelsea squad, it just seems too perfect to let go, but sometimes in football, you just have to let things go, man. Right, let's talk about the big controversy that broke yesterday. UEFA came out with a statement saying that they have banned Manchester City for two years from any UEFA competition. Yes, indeed, that includes the Europa League as well. I'm not sure how sad they will be about that for two years without Champions League. Now, if you don't know about this, I suggest you go and read it. It's regarding breach of financial fair play. Manchester City are contesting this because the way they see it is it's an unbalanced, prejudiced um, prosecution, I guess, because UEFA were the ones who put the rules in, they did the investigation, they sort of, you know, come down with the punishment. There's no, like, um, external mediator. So City will go to the court of arbitration of sport, like Chelsea did, and I think they'll try and appeal the ban completely. I don't think they'll try and get it reduced because even if it gets reduced to one year, in my opinion, Pep Guardiola is gone. Not only that, they lose the revenue of minimum 70 million from the Champions League, they can't draw in new players, um, they might have to sell a couple of players. It, the implications are disastrous of City, even suffering a one-year UCL ban, let alone two. So it's pretty deep on their part. But as things stand, let's say for theoretical sake that there is at least a one-year ban, um, and that's saying that they do get it reduced, that means fifth place in the Premier League gets Champions League this season, or next season rather. A lot of people were asking this, but the truth is that the EPL, the Premier League, gets granted four Champions League spots. That does not change. They have four spots granted. Obviously, the normal way of doing that would be one to four in the, in the Premier League in the finishing spots, but when one of those people in the top four are banned, it simply just gets bumped down to fifth. So Sheffield United, the Blades, they're off to play Barcelona in the Camp Nou. <laughs> But seriously, that's actually really, really good news for Chelsea. It's actually really good news for everyone hunting for a Champions League spot. But Chelsea, that means for them at the moment, not only are they currently in a Champions League spot in fourth place, the spot below them in fifth is indeed a Champions League spot as well. So it offers them extra security, extra comfort, and a better probability and chance of competing in the Champions League next season. Now, like I said, this is all theoretical at the moment. Manchester City will have to work incredibly quick to get this uh, ban lifted for next season. I'm not sure how much time it would take to do all these proceedings, but um, there must be some sort of threshold cutoff where it has to be done before the season turnover because you know Sheffield might be thinking they're going on a European elite tour all the way up to say the beginning of next season then suddenly the ban gets lifted for City and they take their place that would be a cruel blow I mean that could be happening for Chelsea Chelsea could be sitting in fifth all summer well finish fifth think they're going to the Champions League all summer then the ban is lifted and suddenly they get bumped down to the Europa League that would be so so cold so although Chelsea can't rely on it as it stands, it looks like a possibility that there's that extra security blanket beneath Chelsea. Anyway guys, I want to get your thoughts and opinions on everything I've spoke of today. Why do you think Hakim Ziyech will play? Do you see him just really playing out on the right, cutting in on his left foot? Or do you see Frank Lampard utilising him as a number 10 to play him behind the front man like he was quoted a couple of times recently? Get down in the comment section, let me know what you think of that. Also, what do you do about the bogus situation? Do you activate the buyback calls and then maybe sell him like Real Madrid did with Morata to us? <laughs> Uh, when they got him back from Juve, or do you just let him go and Chelsea goes in for one more sort of elite winger? 
do you would you think it's going to be hard to accommodate all these top tier level wide men? Because I still regard Hudson Odoi as a top tier level winger in terms of his ability and how he needs to be nurtured through. As do I. The same with Pulisic. Do you know what I mean? It's difficult. What do you think? Get down in the comments. And also feel free to comment on the Manchester City situation and what you think that means for Chelsea Football Club. If you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do like the video. I do apologise. I'm still ill. I probably sound a little bit stuffy still, and I'm not as bright and as excitable as usual, but that will come back soon, I promise you. So subscribe to Football Therapy, make sure you stop by the channel every single day, I'm going to stop, start uploading daily again, follow me on social media at Football Yannick, that's it from me ladies and gentlemen, you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck, I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk, outline my lines, I rap through thought, body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby